So our next uh, verb is sagaru. You might guess by this kanji that it means um, to go down, and it can mean that in certain contexts. However, when you hear the word sagaru, it almost always refers to like taking a step back, kind of, to go backwards into something, the sagaru, to withdraw, versus going down. More likely, you'll see um, um, oriru, I think, right here, oriru, instead, to mean to go down something. Which, as you see, exact same kanji right there for downness, but sagaru tends to be more stepping back. It can mean the go down, but more often than not, you're going to hear the step back version with sagaru. And it's both an active verb, right? I do the stepping back. Yes. I go and down. I step back. Okay. Um, do you remember how this is pronounced? Could I? Perfect, could I, which is dark. So dark. rather than saying yami for darkness, you can also use just the word could I to mean darkness and kuragari. Another way to say darkness. Kuragari. Hi. So can you do me a favor and read the one on the bottom for me? Kuragari no okue sagaru. What does this mean? I I um I retreated back towards the darkness. Perfect. That's exactly what it means. Nice. Do you happen to know this kanji? Otoko. Perfect. Otoko. Boy. So our next word is torisugiru, which is woo, a verb. That's exactly what it is. Torisugiru means to go past. To go past. Tsuki. Toru, toru is to toru. to go forward? Kind of. Um, kind of. So tori on its own kind of means road. Is kind of what it means. Um, to, toru isn't really a commonly used verb. So I'm kind of there. This kanji is a lot of it. So tsujiru is to go forward kind of. Like the follow a path kind of tsuji do. And kayo has that same kanji there, is um to like come and go routinely to things, like to school, for example, you kayo to school. Um, I don't think toru mm. is used often in Japanese for whatever reason. So it had <laughs> the connotation that just um, traveling somewhere. Basically. Yeah. But you're right. Toru does mean the go past. It's like Google it. I just haven't, haven't, for whatever reason, I don't really see that that much. I'm not in Toru. Sugiru meaning too much. Yes, exactly. So to go access, past too access. much. Exactly. That is what Sugiru is. Hi. So what particle do you think this would get if I said wakimichi, hmm? Tori Sugiru. Wakimichi. Okay, so this is an active verb. I do the action. Hi. So, wakimichi is the one receiving the actions. Um, I go past the road. I go past the road. So it's all. Wakimichi yep, correct. o. Tori sugiru. O, tori sugiru. Perfect. Do you happen to know what irigushi was... means? Yeah. Somehow I was thinking about neat for that sentence, but mm -hmm. I'm guessing the, here in this case we are doing something to the to the road. We're not kind of. So the reason why knee is not here road. is because knee is a destination. So if we're going past a destination, it can't be your destination because you went past it. So we can't use knee there for that reason. <laughs> so you kind of have I, to O is kind of like the only thing left. Because <laughs> you're right. You would assume it would be me, but because we're going past the knee, it's no longer our destination. We can't use me here. Um, do you happen to know what iriguchi means? Iriguchi is an entrance. Yes, exactly. Perfect. So now you're going to be forced to remember the iri part of iriguchi. Iri. Um, so, can you read this for me? Wakimichi no iriguchi e iku. Okay. 
What does this mean? It's mean. I walk towards the entrance of the side street. Perfect. I go toward the entrance of the side street. So didi didi means slow but steady. And it's a kind of adverb. What type of adverb do you think it is? Chiri chiri to. Correct. To. Clearly obvious because you got something repeating. So probably uh, right. onomatopoeia. How would you say to slowly descend into the depths of the darkness using um, kuragari for darkness? Slowly descend into the depth of the darkness. So I use descend rather than to step back into. Okay. So in this case, it would be kuragari no oku. Oh, into, so it's ni. And then, saga, uh, sh chiri chiri sagaru. Nice. So, this adverb needs something. What does it need? To. to. Correct. To. Perfect. Yep. Chiri, Kura, to. Uh, kuragari no oku ni. 100% correct mm. to slowly descend into the darkness. You could also replace replace ni with something else. You know what other particle we could put here? The new one we just learned today. We can use e. Correct. We can use e. Nice. Perfect. Do you happen to know what the te form of tori sugidu is? Te form. Hai. Sugiru is a root verb. Hai. Therefore, tori sugite. Uh, no pause there. Sugite. Sugite. In, in general, just this or the random thing to let you know. If you ever see a verb that is like four sound longer than four sounds, it is probably not going to have pause te. Weirdly enough, I can't think of any. I probably they probably do exist, but if you have to guess with a verb that's longer than four sounds long, it probably isn't going to have the te. Just, just weirdly enough. I, is there words where if you don't have the pause in between, it will cause the meaning to change? Yes. She okay. that right here is to do, and she that is to know. Okay, so it is important. It is important. <laughs> yep. To do, to know. Okay. Um, hi. So right over here is something we kind of touched on before, which is the difference between iku and kudu. I specifically told you it with time, but it doesn't necessarily have to be with time. So with iku, it means this action is happening away from whoever is thinking. Um so if somebody is going to meet um waki michi o tori sugiru, so let's say this is the waki michi right here, and the person is walking this way, they go right past the waki michi. If you say iku, then the person who is in the picture is either going to be over here or over there or something like that. And the person they go past the tori sugiru. So that means they're going past the um side street away from whoever's thought processes is narrating this information. Kudu, Hi. on the other and on the other hand, insinuating is that the person is coming toward the thinker. So this would happen if perhaps you like put like a bomb right here in the wakimichi and you like got on your radio and said, come, come into the car with the wakimichi. Like, I don't know, you made like a baby crying noise in here. And the person, they just happen to walk right by the wakimichi, just to go right by. And they continue heading toward you who is not in the walking routine. So that's just like a random weird scenario where this could pop up. So uh, like in a horror movie or something. But yeah, that, that's what that is. I... It basically just tells us where the person telling the story is. So I like the color. It's like the third person camera and third person pops. But this book specifically is written in the first person. So whenever you see these, the, the person who's telling you this is going to be Khan, the main character. So that this tells you where Khan is, um, which we know by context, he's in the walkie-meechie. It's over there. 
Um, okay, I so yosu o ukagao means to wait and see. Um, yosu is like the situation, kind of. Yosu. Yosu o ukagao. To wait and see. Ukagao is to wait and to see at the same time? Specifically, it's like um, to implore. Uh, this right here is an idiom. So to implore about a situation is apparently to wait and see. <laughs> see how the land lies. <laughs> um, so to wait and see if you like wanted this literally, you'd have like matsu and miru probably combined the together to mean like mimatte or something, which isn't a word, but... Uh, that kanji on the ukagao, it looks so familiar. Does. It like, probably looks like I've onaji, it but it's not onaji. It might also look like nani. nani. So that would be my guess. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of flopping these two, but which it's is not what and same. Mm -hmm. That'd be my okay. guess. Because these are very common or common, but I don't think ukagao is very common. Wait and see. Yosu ukagao. Um, so iku is an irregular verb. So rather than te from being ite, which is really hard to say, ite, it becomes ite because that e there is too hard. Ite, ite. Mm. Hi. So what do you think the ta form of iku is? Itta. Perfect. Itta. Nice. So before we do this, there's a new um grammar here. To. I kind of decided to skip it on this one because this is not the best example of to as a grammar thing. It's it's basically means right after I do this, this happens. Is basically just what it's saying. So sometimes we see te that I've told you before. It's kind of like tends to have a relationship between the two actions. Te allows there to be a time gap. You could wait like an hour and or like a day and that would be fine as long as there's some kind of relationship. To really should be right after this. I do this and then that happens. So you can say immediately after it's Hi. to. Now you get to go read this. Yes, it is. Oki no oh, oops, oops. It's a oku. はい。奥の切り上がりへ。ちりちりと下がって様子。下がって様子を伺うと脇道の入り口を男が通り過ぎていた。so first of all, can you read this one again yes. for me? Kuragari? Yes, Kuragari. Perfect. So first off, we have a main character, Kon. So Kon, he does the first part of this, which is Oku no kuragari e jiri jiri to sagatte yosu o ukagao. What do you think that means? Slowly um descended or retreated into right. the darkness deep into the darkness right. um yosu and and wait and wait yes. to see what happened yeah. he lay in wait nice right he after he wait. does this then right. uh wakimichi no hirikuchi o totoko ga um the man at the entrance of the side street. Passes the passes him or passes him and the side street. Yep. Basically. Exactly. He passes him and the side street. It's a good way to help illustrate mm. the EQ part of here. Because it's just saying he goes past the side street while letting us still remember that Khan <laughs> is in that side street. Is why that Ita is in there. Versus just um, if it was Hi. Ita, here's another example of how that glottal stop makes it different. If it was just Ita, then Khan's not really a part of this anymore. It just means he went past the side street, period. Where's Khan? I don't know. Not related at all. 
um, but the ita tells us is going away from con. So that is another um, example of that small um, hi to make a difference. Okay, kanji check. How's this guy pronounce? Um, you meshi. Perfect. And this guy. Ashioto. Perfect. And this guy way over here. Kakurete. Perfect. Um, actually, you're not going to do that one. How about this guy? Senaka. Perfect. And this guy? Hikoeta. Perfect. Hikoeta. And that is how far I prepped. I don't know. I did bad again. <laughs> so, uh... We have <laughs> I'll be better in the future. So that means I did two times that I didn't do the full time, which is perfect because that makes like one whole lesson more I got to do. So that, that works. <laughs> I'll be better. Violet. Uh, there. Oh, one row below. It, it's all about getting used to things, you know. <laughs> what one day? Hi, it takes time. It takes time. Hi. Uh, any it specific... takes time to get the hang of things. Yeah, I'll stop the recording. Uh...